Hi guys, Mark here at Blue Glow Electronics. It's hard to believe, but it has been six years since I created a guide on YouTube to instruct people on how to calibrate their TV7 style tube testers in a very practical way, using modern tools like a digital multimeter and uh, just common tools found around the house versus the long drawn out military manual that requires some very specialized military test equipment and whatnot. Um, but in that time, in the six years since 2018, I've had thousands and thousands of people watch this video and calibrate their TV7. So I'm super happy with the value we've gotten out of putting this video out there. However, along the way, I have gotten hundreds of emails from those thousands of people asking for clarity on certain slides or whatnot. There were a lot of steps when I put this together that were somewhat implied. And so I have now decided to update the guide. This will be 2.1 version um, that goes in more depth. It gets rid of a lot of the implied steps and it really lays everything out in detail. I've also added some new stuff to this guide around solid state tube rectification in your TV7, as well as some tips on how to go about doing these a little more effective. So if you're about to um, calibrate a TV7 tube tester, I would recommend watch the first video all the way through, watch this video, then use the manual and guide to kind of walk you through the steps. And you'll be able to find this guide on my website at blueglow.net. All right, let's get into it. Hi guys, just a general reminder here, nothing has changed on this slide. However, there are high voltages inside of this unit, potentially enough to kill you. So please take care when working inside of these units. Uh, be very diligent. And if you are, you can do it safely, but just pay attention. Okay, guys, page three here, the disclaimer page. Nothing really changed other than I went down here and I updated some of the individuals that are active that I know of as of 2024 that are actively working on TV7 tube testers. So if you get in over your head or you need some help, these are the guys that you could reach out to. Okay, page four had no changes. This is page five. The only thing I added here is that you used to could buy a little scale to go on your meter that would give you a micro modes reading down below the uh, scale. At any rate, I think the individual Robert Kenny at alltubetesters.com is no longer in business. Uh, the website doesn't show up anymore. I saw some stuff in a forum about health issues maybe, but anyway, uh, don't take my word for this. If you want, if you're interested in one of those, try to find one. But as of right now, I believe that uh, he's out of business. All right, guys, page six and seven, completely new in this manual. Uh, the part of why I made this update, I get a lot of questions via email asking me, hey, Mark, could I just insert some solid state replacements for the 5Y3 and the 83 tube in this? And if I do, is that OK? And so I thought I would walk people through that today and add that to this manual. So this is part of why you need to watch part two if you want to make a decision on this. OK, here are the pros of using solid state rectification. Easier to find potentially. Uh, these Type 83 tubes are not common these days, and they're kind of expensive, okay? Number three, your unit powers up more quickly. You don't have to wait on the solid, I mean, the vacuum tube rectification to warm up. Mercury vapor tubes like this can take a little while for the mercury vapor to build up and for them to stabilize. So you're up in testing quicker, let's say it that way, okay? Next, the TV7 behaves more consistent, consistently, less drift when testing. So when you push button number three, the mutual conductance button, and you're testing, a lot of times it'll, let's say it'll go up, say you're testing a 6L6, and it goes up to say 42. And you hold the button, and after about three or four seconds, maybe it drifts down to a, a rating of a 41, okay? And you hold it there for a few more seconds until it completely stabilizes. Then you say, okay, this, the rating on this one is a 41. Well, when you're using tube rectification, this thing may start out at 43, and it may take a little while, and it may drift down to 42, then it may drift to around 42 for a while, then it drifts down to 41. And it just takes longer, and there seems to be more drift in it. Um, so, seem to be a little more sharper, crisper testing and using the solid state rectification. So all that sounds great. All right, guys, like everything in life, there's either compromise or trade-off, and that is the case here, okay? 
Reason being, this Type 83 rectifier you see down below here, it has a special purpose and it keeps a constant 15 volt, volt drop across it regardless of the current being drawn through it. That is not as easily achieved with a solid state rectifier as it is this uh, mercury vapor rectifier. So that unit was put in here for a purpose and a reason, okay? And I'm not saying it's impossible to do that with solid state rectification. I'm just saying the chances of finding that in something you buy on eBay or online in a small little tube base or whatnot, probably not uh, gonna have that same characteristic. Now, for, low sig for small signal tubes like 12AX7, 6DJ8, uh, 6AU6, whatever, it really doesn't play out much at all and it doesn't make it much of any difference. And guys, I, I took two tube testers, one on the left with solid state rectification, one on the right with um, tube rectification. I calibrated them both and then I took a 12AX7 and I tested it in one, tested it in the other. 6AU6, tested it in one and the other. Then I went to 6L6 in one, 6L6 in the other. Then I started introducing other tubes into the mix, right? Um, some KT88, some EL34s, whatnot. And what I noticed was that there was one or two points off typically between the two testers and that the solid state one would vary by a point or two from my reference tubes, okay? So having said that, these are not 1% lab grade devices. They are 10% field devices. These, these units were designed to be carried out in the field and test equipment out in the field. So my statement here is there's a trade-off decision you will need to make between the stability of solid state rectification, maybe the quick boot up, and the accuracy of the tube-based rectification. For directional hobby-based usage, both are viable options. Look, if you've got a couple tube amps, guitar amps, you're trying to test if your tubes are good or not, you're trying to figure out if these tubes are matched or not, um, you're going to be perfectly fine. Because if you're trying to match two EL34s, let's call it, um, the, the scenario will play out the same on both of them, so you're going to be able to tell if they're matched or not. Having said all of that, my personal preference, as long as you can still buy Type 83 tubes, um, I would go with the tube rectification. Uh, it's what this unit was designed for. Um, but if you want to go the solid state route, it's not a bad route either. And for hobby-based stuff, you're going to be perfectly fine. All right. All right. If you do decide to go the solid state rectification route, I've got some instructions here for you. Um, but there again, guys, it's it's more like a 55-45 decision for me that I would go with the tube rectification. It's not like it's a 90-10 decision for me. Um, so if you want to go this route, you're perfectly fine. Up here's a picture of ones commonly found on eBay. And in this individual's auction, he says, before buying, please read the following. The line voltage is considerably higher than when your equipment was made and recalibration is recommended. Anytime tubes are replaced with new tubes or solid state rectifiers. Also, the line voltage control may need to be modified to properly zero the meter under no load conditions. A 10 watt resistor in the range of 20 to 40 ohms can be installed in the center tap of the line control potentiometer for this modification. If you're not proficient in making these types of changes, I would recommend you do not purchase these solid state rectifiers. So here's the bottom line. If you see the schematic here, you got your wall plug, it comes in, it feeds right into the center tap of a 200 ohm potentiometer. You're going to want to insert a resistor in line with that to help drop some voltage. Uh, because what happens is these solid state rectifiers don't drop as much voltage as the tube rectifiers do. And as a result, you've got higher voltages working inside of your unit. So you're wanting to try to bring that down before it gets to your power transformer. Thus, it'll play out through the rest of the unit. I made a note here. This pot's 200 ohm. This is, this is just adding some additional uh, resistance in series with that. I actually found that a 50 ohm worked perfectly. I started out with a 30 three ohm, then I moved to 222 ohms, which made it 44 ohms. And ultimately I ended up with a 50 ohm and I did quite a bit of testing myself. So, but that might depend on your line voltage. I noted here 
mine typically runs 123 volts or so and that that made the 50 ohm sand style power resistor work out perfect for me i inserted one end of this with a little hook in it down into the center tap you can see right down here and then i squeezed it uh, with a pair of needle nose pliers then i soldered it and then i made sure the resistor was sticking straight up in the air and i used a wire from the top of it that came down and then soldered to the uh, fuse lug here and then i just dropped a piece of heat shrink tubing over the top of that and and shrunk it up and uh it's good and solid doesn't move and it sticks straight up so air can get all around it and um, doesn't seem to get warm enough to bother the heat shrink tubing that i put on it so this is really all you need to do to um, to make this happen. And you might want to try around with uh, something between, he's, like he said, 20 and 40 ohms. If you can't get it to calibrate properly, then bump up like I did to a 50 ohm. Fast forward, the next thing that I changed uh, on page 11 is in the original video I made, I said that I do not sell um, calibration tubes. Well, come to find out, the individual I pointed you to to buy calibration tubes no longer sells them on eBay. So, you know, necessity put me in a mode of I now sell calibration tubes. So um, if you want to find them, you can find them under my eBay ID, Blue Glow Electronics. I added this page in, page 14, that basically tells you at this point, Paul's print out the remainder of this deck starting on page 15 until the end. You're going to want to go through and mark everything off uh, step by step as you go. All right, I updated slide or page 16 here. Um, I may added this little piece here and I cleaned and did a little bit of cleanup with some of my arrows and whatnot over here. The 47 ohm resistors are one of the most common TV7 issues. Do not overlook this step. I've had people email me saying, hey, those things are really tough. And you can see down in here, they're, they're standing straight up and down on these poles of these switches. And people are like, well, I just went and skipped that and went on and calibrated, tried to calibrate the unit without touching those because they're really hard to get to. No, no, no. You got you got to address these 47 ohms. Look, yours may be fine, but I will tell you, if they look fine, poke them with a screwdriver. Often they will just crumble right there. They, um, they've, they've been fried. And the way these get damaged, and I added that in here, I think, is when you push the button, okay? And you happen to have your dial settings wrong for the type of tube that you have in it, these little 47 ohm resistors get fried. All right, I added in a little picture here on slide 20 or page 26 here to show the type of little hooks that I use for connecting to pin 8 and pin 5 uh, and sometimes pin 4 of the octal socket whatnot. And I just cleaned up a lot of the wording and tips along the way. On page 27 here, I had told you before to connect a 330K resistor between 4 and 8 of the octal socket. I'll show you how I did that here. I put in these pictures. I just took an empty tube socket here and I soldered in a 330K ohm. So then all I have to do is plug that into the back of the um, tube socket adapter that I showed you guys in an earlier slide when you're testing. And it makes it really, really simple. This is just an example here on page 31 of some of the cleanup I did um, where it wasn't, things were implied before. Like it would say set range on range B and adjust the bias so the meter reading is at a 120 full scale. What I didn't say was while pushing the number three mutual conductance button. So I went in throughout this thing and got very explicit telling you things like, you know, while you are pushing this button, while you're pushing this button, so on and so forth. That's really it, guys. Just some cleanup added in a few new sections. Uh, you know, I do. I did add this reminder here at the end here. These are not lab grade devices. Again, they were field units and they're 10% directional at best. Having said that, they are great tube testers for home hobby use, used to match tubes and to determine if they're good or bad. But anyway, hope you guys are having luck uh, calibrating your tube testers. Uh, if so, uh, give me a thumbs up on this video and uh, subscribe. And there again, if you still got questions after this update, you guys can always email me. Thanks for watching, everybody.